Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is day two of the disassembly process on old 5J2115 right here and hope you uh, enjoyed day one. I know that video got kind of long, but uh, this one I'm going to try and get a little bit more uh, disassembly done, a little bit less talking. I need to make some progress on this. And got the water pump coming out now. It's always usually a rather tight fit in the front cover, but it can usually be taken out without damage. The propeller still looks pretty good. So now that I've got most of the uh, components off of the front of this, I'm going to be moving on along down to the side here, uh, probably get into the injection pump governor and then fuel filter tower next. So for this I'm going to take the governor housing and injection pump off as a unit since they don't need to be split just to get those off of the engine. And uh, first step for that is to get underneath this little square cover here, disconnect the linkage that goes from where the flyweights are up in the front cover and extends back to your um, injection pump uh, shaft. Here's the pin right here pop that out right there and then you just have to unbolt this pump and that whole assembly will come off. Just going to try for a little bit better view here. Cotter pin out. Now the linkage pin usually comes out pretty easy. Yep. There we go. The linkage fell harmlessly forward into the front cover. So we're disconnected from the uh, rack shaft now. Got seven fasteners that Attach this pump to the filter tower, one, two, three, right here. Number four is on the bottom, and then five, six, seven. It's kind of hard to reach on the back side. Usually an extension with a swivel socket will get them just fine. But um, you might have noticed there's kind of some newish looking paint on these pieces here. I was into these as well um, in the two years that I was trying to find replacement undercarriage for 2115 here. Uh, I was trying to make it run a little bit better and basically doing everything external that I could to try and overcome the uh, internal base engine wear that this just plain has. And I never really did it get it. I never really did. Sorry, get it running as well as I wanted to. But uh, I was I was doing what I could at the time without spending a lot of money. Um, I believe one of the pictures that I have of when we were swapping the tracks between. Um, 2115 here and X253, you can see this paint was all pretty fresh at that time. I believe that was that was not long after I had been in and kind of redid this pump and filter tower and everything. And while I was into this, I rebuilt the hour meter that was uh, stripped out, not working. Turns out those are pretty darn simple inside. I might do a video on how to uh, refresh those one day. I also replaced the oil seal that's at the front of the lifter cam in the base of this pump. This pump has its own oil reservoir. Let's check through this little cap right here. Not a lot of people know that and it's pretty common to have that seal completely out of this cam and then all that oil runs out into your oil pan this thing ends up running dry. So if you get a old uh, J-Series D2, I'll just about guarantee it still has that old leather lip seal in here. And it's probably leaking and you're probably very low on oil in your uh, pump reservoir. I'm going to start attacking those three bolts down between the pump and the block that I mentioned earlier. Like I said before, usually a long 3 8 uh, extension and a 9 16 swivel will get you on these just fine. Uh, a lot of guys dread these back here. I really don't mind them. I work in the auto industry and <laughs> when you compare this to that modern crap, I mean, this is what we'd call a gravy job right here. If you can even see the fasteners you're going after in my, you know, my real job, my real line of work, if you can even see those things, you're ahead of the game right there. So this really doesn't bother me at all back here. So I usually save this bolt up here for last just because it's a very easy one to access after everything else has been taken off. And uh, I've had people voice concerns about removing these pumps to like do a reseal up here and worrying about losing pump timing or anything like that. If you're just taking one off right here to reseal it, you can't lose timing at all because your base timing is dictated by the accessory shaft, which is in your timing gears that are up here underneath the front cover. And the accessory shaft will drive your 
um, pump cam down in the base by an offset slot and tang setup so it can really only go back together one way so if you just take this entire piece off reseal it you, you can only put it back on one way so you're not going to lose any timing these pump lifters are adjustable behind this cover but it doesn't even pay to get into that until we do a reassembly because it's uh it's it's just not coming into play right now but it doesn't matter how big or strong you think you are I'll guarantee you and have a pan ready because that always happens I'll guarantee you this pump and injection or sorry pump and governor assembly is a lot heavier than what you think I don't care how strong you think you are it's going to catch you off guard the first time you uh, you pull one of these out fuel filter tower now is a little bit more uh, straightforward these three studs that had the hidden nuts behind the injection pump um, just pass through holes in this side of the flange so you just have uh, four fasteners up here that need to be undone and then of course just work it off its alignment dowels and after that just guide it off the studs So anyway, back to the story, you can see kind of some fresh paint on, well, fresher paint on some of these uh, pieces too. I had to have all this stuff off to repair this oil manifold at one point. These soldered joints had uh, fatigued, fretted, cracked, and were leaking. So had all this stuff off, got all that squared away, put back on, refreshed the breather uh, while I had it off, changed the oil filter over as well. It was the earlier bypass system that was still on this engine, and that only filters a portion of the oil that is... Uh, being circulated through the system, but I did have this um, full flow set up, so I went through this. Uh, it does a much better job of filtering the oil because every bit of oil that's circulated has to go through the filter with this setup, so I got that put on. Also just kind of cleaned up this uh, oil filler elbow, put some fresh paint on that as long as it was off. And also right after I did the undercarriage swap between 2115 and X253, I went ahead and fabbed up some rock guards to protect the lower track rollers. I just made them out of some flat steel. But I was starting to uh, play with uh, metal working a little bit. thought that'd be a kind of a fun project. So I went ahead and did it. And then one final thing I did before putting the blade back on was uh, retool the hydraulic pump that was on the front of this thing. The old one um, didn't really work the uh, newer style cylinders that I had on the blade so uh, I ended up going through a Vickers vein pump building a special drive adapter and getting that mounted to the uh, to the front of the engine there. Uh, also fixed up a different hydraulic reservoir out of an old air tank that went on the fender over here. So with all of that work done, I finally got the blade put back on 2115 and ran it for the next few years that way. I really didn't take any more pictures of it after that because I was just kind of out doing little odd jobs with it. And the breaks between working on X253 and anything else, it would keep me busy. So that lasted until I bought my 5U, number 7066. You've seen that on my channel here quite a bit. It's pretty well restored now but I'll uh, I'll blip to a picture of that real quick shows what it looked like when I first hauled it home and it uh, pretty much looked like a complete basket case but turns out the inside was a lot better than what the whole before picture lets on so to make another long story short I spent the next three years from 2006 to 2009 completely rebuilding old 7066 and I found that I could make a much better machine out of 7066 than I ever could out of poor 2115 here. So in the course of that rebuild, most of the good undercarriage that I got for 2115 from that guy in California ended up getting put onto 7066 along with that. Cat 2S straight blade 
that was originally on X253 and then got put on 2115 and then eventually found a permanent home on old 7066. So. That's why poor 2115 here ended up being parked with just the junkiest undercarriage I had left, just to kind of keep the thing on, you know, on, on an undercarriage to keep it movable. No blade on it, just, you know, parked there, robbed pieces off of it. That's where the fuel pump went that was missing off this in the original walk around. That's on 7066 now. Uh, starting engine got pulled off. Many parts of that got used on 7066, so that's pretty much when old 2115 was abandoned for good right there. And that pretty much leads us up to this point right now where I'm trying to uh, scavenge the engine block out of her and hopefully make old 1113 live on with that. And now we see if I can pull this cylinder head without needing the hoist. Uh, not too bad, really. Okay, now we can finally see something. Get this uh, head gasket peeled off here. I actually had this cylinder head off eh, when I was about 20 years old. So all this stuff actually came apart pretty well. I did these uh, valves at that time, kind of refreshed it a little bit. Like I say, I was trying real hard to make this thing run better than what it was, but just from base engine wear, oh my gosh. I mean, she really built up carbon on some of these. Number two is really bad. I don't know if it was really pumping oil burning it or if I had a uh, injector not spraying too well but number two is pretty bad this thing probably only has uh, I know less than 30 hours on it since I redid this head all those years ago and I can't believe how carboned up those bores are but I'm gonna have to uh, check my valve recession that was one thing I was not aware of when I did these see how far they've sunken in I know these little d3400s are quite sensitive to that the further your valve wears in or grinds in the larger your combustion chamber gets and then the less uh, compression the less heat it has to uh, cold start and I know I've always had to use ether to get this one going unless it had already been warmed up but like I say there's some pretty profound base engine wear I mean just listen to this that's the ridge at the top of the cylinder get some light in there maybe we can see a little bit better how loose these pistons are Yep. When you can get a piston, it knocks back and forth like that. You know, she's pretty loose. Okay, guys, I had to reposition the camera just to uh, try and catch this. I'm having trouble getting it to show through, but you see this um, really shiny reflection on that side of the piston? That is the top ring. I've never had another engine, especially a diesel engine, that had such a gap between the piston and the cylinder wall that you could actually look down and see that shiny top ring just to give you an idea how badly this is worn and I wish I could make it come through on the camera but just with the naked eye you can see a gap right about there and it looks like it's about 70 to 80 thousand so you can actually look down and check your ring gap on this one without even pulling a piston out pretty outstanding well guys sorry to cut and run on you now but it's getting quite late I didn't get a very early start today and I'm gonna have to wrap day two up right here but Hopefully you've been able to see kind of how badly worn old 2115 is. I mean, I tried a lot of different things to try and make that engine run better, and it was just base engine wear that was causing most of my problems. But I got a lot of uh, education on it. I did a lot of learning and uh, pretty much learned how <coughs> a Caterpillar D2 engine ticks from all the times I was into this one. Speaking of ticks, I still just cannot believe that. That is a profound amount of play. All four of those holes are the same way. Anyway, guys, stay tuned for day three. I'd like to uh, get a little bit more disassembly done and a little less talk, and I've pretty much covered the whole backstory on 2115 um, up to you know where it is right now. So hope you guys are enjoying the series. Uh, disassembly is going to continue, hopefully tomorrow. If not tomorrow, then the next day for sure. Hope to see you back then.